What's going on YouTube? Welcome to Wesley's Angling. You're joining me in the tackle room again today for the next video in the tackle maintenance and preparation series. As you can see, I've got some of my reels laid out in front of me here. You might be thinking, Westy, you've got a problem buying fishing tackle. You're probably right. But these have all got different purposes. They're all for different methods of fishing. As you know, if you're following the channel, I do all different types of fishing. I'll fish method feeders for carp, or normal coarse fish. I'll fish for cats, I'll fish for sturgeon, I'll fish for carp. So they've all got different strengths loaded with different lines for different purposes. I'll go for a little bit of that, but the main aim in today's episode is to show you how I strip the line off a reel and how I load it onto a reel. So hopefully you pick up a couple of tips. I'm going to make your lives a lot easier in the way that I do it. I work six days a week, so I need convenience, I need it to be quick if I'm ever doing a job like this. There's a few different strengths of line that we're going to be changing today, which I'll go through with you. We've got our Shimano 4000 GT reels that we sent off to Philander Innovations on the last episode and got them refurbished. Now, they're loaded with 8 pound Daiwa sensor currently, but it's, it's Daiwa Ultra sensor, so it's not as much stretch as I'd like, and to be honest with you, I prefer normal Daiwa sensor. Daiwa sensor is my favourite line. So that's what we're going to be loading on a lot of these reels today, but in different braking strains. Okay, so for our method feeder fishing, we're going to be loading those up with 8 pound normal Daiwa sensor. And stripping the old stuff off. The rest of these are my catfish and cart reels. So we've got our uh, Whitewood Exorcist reels there. Now these were my old catfishing reels. These are loaded with 20 pound Daiwa sensor which is really heavy duty stuff, but if you're targeting cats that are over 30 pounds in the UK, you really need to up your game with the line that you're using and also the type of reel that you're using. So these Whitewood Exorcist reels are only cheap, they're nowhere near strong enough for handling catfish that are over 40 pounds, which is what we're going to be targeting this year. So I treated myself and uh, bought myself some Pen Affinity LTD 7000 reels. So. Very, very high quality reels, very strong drag on them. And these I've already preloaded up because I got them last year just before Christmas um, with Berkeley Tri-Line Big Game. Now I've loaded those up with 40 pound, so they should be able to handle anything in the UK. Um, probably cats up to about 80 pound, you'd be fine with those. And to be honest with you, this line's so thick that you don't even need to use rig tubing with it. You're meant to use rig tubing with catfish because they have a sharp dorsal fin and it can actually sever line. I've had it happen to me before on that 20 pound Daiwa sensor. Just cut through the line like a knife through butter. So you really need to use rig tubing with the cats. What we're also going to do with these, obviously I've got multiple spools for them. Uh, we're going to strip this off. This has got 10 pound line on at the moment and we're going to put 15 pound Daiwa sensor on it. So that's what we're going to be using. I've got a session booked on Cudmore next weekend. So um, we're going to be using that for the carp and hopefully land ourselves a decent carp on that 15 pound. 15 pound Daiwa sensor should be able to handle cats up to about 30 pound and uh, carp up to about 30 pound if you're playing the fish right. Um, you shouldn't really need anything more than 15 pound line for carp. Uh, you just need to make sure that your drag's set right. And then we've got my trusty Shimano 6000 DL reels, which I'm going to be stripping down and loading with 10 pound normal Daiwa sensor. So I've invested in some new line. I normally swap my line every 12 to 18 months ish, usually at the end of a fishing season. Um, if it's had a lot of use, you know me, I go fishing quite regular. Um, I'll either strip back 20-30 meters, but there's only so many times you can do that before you really need to replace the line. Monofilament's inexpensive and you don't want to lose yourself a fish just for the sake of not changing it. I would say as a rule of thumb, every 18 months, 2 years, you need to get yourself uh, some new line loaded on your reel. Uh, like I said, my favourite, Daiwa Sensor, Berkeley Tri-Line, big game, good stuff. But there's plenty of other lines out there, everybody's got their own favourites, but it's really good stuff, very, very high quality, so I recommend Diver Sensor. Let's get into it, I'll show you how I strip line off reels, it's going to make your life a lot easier. 
Okay, so some of these we're going to load up with lines, some of these we're just stripping. But I'm going to show you how to strip multiple uh, spools at once. Very, very easy. All you're going to need a drill, some tape, and some cardboard. Okay? So, what I want to do is get our piece of cardboard. Don't have to be out special. I'll show you what we're going to do with it. And you just want to cut. To be pretty. So we're just going to cut out a shape that looks something like that. Okay, so a thicker bit at the end, thin bit in the middle, thinnish bit in the middle and uh, a wider bit at the bottom. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take our drill bit, take that off the drill and I'm just going to tape that on tight what you can do is you can actually put it inside the cardboard if you wanted to bury it in like that so we're going to sell tape and we we'll drill a bit to the cardboard got some strong tape you can use any tape though as long as it holds it secure doesn't really matter this is all going to be apparent why we're doing this in a second Going to secure it on the other side around the base of the drill bit as well. Now what we're going to do is put that back in the drill bit, tighten it up, you can see how that's going to spin and it's going to wrap the line up around it. Okay, Much easier than doing it by hand and you can do multiple reels at once. So the, the reels that we want to strip we're just going to tie around now I've never done it with so many reels before <laughs> I've only done it with a few at a time but we're gonna do this I feel like the Frankenstein of the uh, the reel stripping world here because I've tied on this is the most reels I've ever done so I've tied on one two three four five six seven eight reels to strip and I'm just gonna gently start it off just guiding the start of the line round until all the slack's taken up. <laughs> it's working. And I just need to keep my hand here and guide it. There you go. Now, you can't go too fast because you'll flip the reels. One of them's struggling. You need to be over the top of the reel like this. See, that's what happens if you go too fast. So you've got to take it easy. A lot easier than doing it by hand though. So you get the idea. That's stripping all them reels off at once. This is better for the environment. Birds and wildlife aren't going to get tangled up in this because I'm going to seal it in a bag after we've finished. As I'm reaching the backing on the reels, I'm just snipping them off and carrying on. Because of how many reels I'm doing at once, I've already filled one, look. <laughs> That's mental. So, I've just done the same again. Retied and back on. It helps if you hold all the line together loosely and just have the drill and line running at an angle. Like that. Go as fast as you want then because your hands just hit the back in on one. We're almost running out of these now. So snipping that off and go back to it. Right folks, so we've stripped our reels. That, that's how much line we've got off those reels. 
So we've uh, stripped one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten reels at once there, and they're all down to back in or empty. So I'm going to move them to one side. Now I'm not going to show you how to load every single one of these reels because it'll just be a really boring video. So the ones that we're going to concentrate on, I'm going to do the rest off camera, is this 15 pound Daiwa sensor on my cat fishing reels. I've got a specimen fishing session coming up, so these need loading up, they're a priority. So what I've got next to me is a bowl of warm water, okay? And it's just got a couple of drops of ferry liquid in. So the reason that you put a couple of drops of ferry liquid in, or meant to, is um, it takes some of the grime and dust away uh, that you get in the manufacturing processes of uh, the line. And the reason that you need warm water is what you're going to do is you're going to pop your spool into the water and let it sit in there for, I don't know, five, ten minutes and it's just going to make the line supple so that the line lay on the spool is going to be perfect, okay? So that's a little tip for you, warm water and you put it in water because as you're reeling it in onto your new spools and it's just going to spin in the water which I'll show you and it's just going to make it really easy to wind onto your reel. You don't need much ferry liquid, don't be putting loads in, you don't want any bubbles, you just want uh, some of the oils to come off. And as we know, ferry liquid breaks down oils. So what I'm going to do with these is I'm going to seal them up tight in a plastic bag um, so that no wildlife is going to get caught up in that line once it gets to the, uh, the rubbish dump. Right, so let's load some line onto this reel. So we want to put our spool on, the actual reel itself. I usually have it so that the, uh, the spool's at the bottom of the reel as well. Usually a good place to start. Really important, open your bail arm. And we'll put this on a rod. Just a spinning rod. Then what I wanna do is trap that rod. Make sure that you put it through the first eye on the rod. Then you wanna tie a couple of granny knots in the line. And you want, I usually start it off at the bottom of the reel, but if you just get your knots in place first, now you can use a slip knot to make it a little bit easier, and then you want to trim the tag end of the line. Some spools have special seats to start off the reel. Just got my spool in the water. The line's going to be coming off the top of the spool. Okay, now that's not always what you want. You want the line coming off a limp and not coiled. So usually there'll be a way around where it's coiled and a way around where it's coming off a limp. So I'm pretty confident that's the right way around. You need to have a little bit of a play about with it, but you don't want it coiled when it's going on your, on your reel. What I usually do is put the line through two of my fingers at the top there. You might want to do this if you're using braid because there's a chance that you might cut your finger. But with mono it's fine, especially mono that's this thick. Now you don't want to hold the line too tight, you just want steady pressure. Just as you would if you were reeling in on a normal rod. And then start to fill your spool. And that spool of the line is just spinning gently. I don't know if you can able to see it on the camera, I think you can. So you want the water deep enough so that the spool can spin. You usually want to stop just before the lip on the top of the spool. The reason that you do that is it stops the line coiling off the spool. So I'm going to fill this up now and then I'll show you what it looks like. I'm just going to put that in a clip and then I'll show you how much line we've got on that spool. It's loaded on nicely. So there's usually enough on one of these thousand meter spools to do two Lots of uh, reels, so there we go. Line's loaded on, it's not coiling off, so let's unclip it. You see that? It's not coiling off the spool, which is what you want. So 
and you want to stop just before the lip on the top edge of the spool and that will cast perfectly and like I said it's not going to coil off. Right folks, so I'm going to get all these spools loaded up with line for the upcoming fishing season. I just want to say thank you very much for watching the video. If you have any questions about anything that we've done today, please don't hesitate to drop a comment in the comment section. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, now's your chance to do so. And make sure you hit the bell notification so you don't miss another one of these videos. But I hope you've picked up a couple of tips. Like I said, thanks very much for watching and we'll see you in the next Westies Angling.